going to have to remove that lock cylinder from the glove box because it's not functioning correctly. But here's the interesting part. In order to do that, the key does fit in it. And it turns when it's unlocked, but it doesn't lock. So we know that something's wrong with the mechanism, and we're going to take that out and have it serviced. Here's the interesting part. In order to make this a little easier, we pop the glove box off so that it would come out and we could do this on the bench and get that lock out on the bench. It just makes it a little bit easier. But what happens when we take this off? Well, here's the really interesting thing. Somewhere up in here, in the jam of the glove box door, drops a quarter onto the mat. Ordinarily, we call that a ground score and say, hey, we made some money. This quarter looked funny to begin with. And sure enough, it is a bicentennial quarter from 1976. Now, it has almost no value at all, except that this car is a bicentennial Eldorado. And that is just ironic. So we're going to save this quarter and give it to the new owner as a souvenir. Well, here we are with our glove box off of the car, and we are going to remove this key cylinder. Even though we don't have the correct key for it or there's something wrong with it that's not allowing it to happen, getting this out is very, very easy. I mean, it takes just seconds. So let me show you how it's done. So we've got our glove box off, and we've got it on the bench where it's just easier to work on, a lot more light. First thing you're going to want to do, because we don't have the right key to this or there's something malfunctioning with this lock, ordinarily you need a key to get this thing out, but what we're going to do is, nice and easy, you set this thing to lock, and if you look down here, there is a little pin right there. It's just a little brass pin. Okay, we're going to use our pick, and on this side of the lock, we're going to gently put our pick behind and between the lock cylinder and the glove box door, allowing gravity to let that right out of there. Then we're going to take our second pick and we're going to push in that little brass item and boom, the lock comes right out. So we can take this to our locksmith and he can repair it, get the key to work correctly, and we'll be all good. Now if you have a lock on your glove box that's perpetually loose and always moving around this is the part that you need to tighten up it's like a hex head and you can use a large screwdriver a file something and just tighten that up and it will get nice and tight in there and screw back in this particular glove box doesn't have that issue so you don't have to worry about it but if you have it on yours that's the trick now as luck would have it we found out what the issue was with this lock cylinder and why it didn't work the key wouldn't turn the lock wouldn't go in there and wouldn't do anything, wouldn't move the tumblers. This is the key we got with the car, with this nice plastic thing on it from the hardware store. This is the genuine GM key that we got from the locksmith. Ta-da! It doesn't have the big plastic thing on it. So in fact, this key worked the whole time and we didn't have to do anything to it except have a new key cut with the GM logo on it. So get the right key, your lock will work just fine. And now we'll reinstall it and make it work the way it's supposed to. And now when you use the proper key, you just put it in, turn it, it locks the way it's supposed to. Unlocks, opens, and you're all good to go. I'm not too proud to display my stupidity on the internet. I didn't catch the thing about the big red plastic head on the key. We wouldn't have even had to have made the video, but you needed to know how to get the glove box lock out of there and how to tighten it up anyway. So thanks for watching the West of the Lake Region Cadillac and LaSalle Club. We own our stupidity.